What's up, my wizards? It's Deb from SBMTG. We like it a magic, and today we're going to look at a little, little mono white mid range deck over here and see what's up with that because I hear a lot of people strutting around lately talking about how white is terrible. It's the worst color in all of magic right now. You know, Pleasant Kenobi out here talking about how it's so far behind all the other colors and it's a real tragedy. So today we're either going to prove them wrong or prove them right. I'm not really sure which one. I've been playing this deck for a while on Arena over the last week or so, and it's got just below a 50% win rate. So I'm not sure it's the best deck in the world, but you know, we'll see how it does in the games today. You know, there's some good cards that we do have access to if we're going to limit ourselves to only white cards. And we did end up all white everything except for one card here, but we'll talk about that in a second let's start with giant killer this card is actually really really good whether or not it's on the table or in your hand and you're waiting to cast it at instant speed this thing kills all kinds of stuff whether it's questing beasts rotting registrar or creatures that didn't start at big enough to be able to kill it but you know once they get an ember cleave on them or a plus one plus one counter here and there suddenly they are big enough you know like a non plus one plus one counter gruel spellbreaker that it gets an ember cleave put on it well suddenly you got an instant speed answer to that and that can be really important in a whole bunch of games but just as an instant speed answer to a questing beast giant killer can be really really good but it's got all kinds of uses in this format right now charming prince usually especially if you play this on turn two you're going to choose scry two that's actually really really good to fix your next couple of draws especially at that point in the game but if you draw it later you might gain a little bit of life or even you know blink a uh, cavalier of dawn or something like that you know all kinds of uses for charming prince whether you top deck it or you get it on turn two but the creature that we really want to see most on turn two is a tithe taker this thing is great right now and it hoses a couple of specific decks you know these flash decks and the various azorius control decks that pop up on arena here and there really anything playing counter spells the is it and demir flash decks as well this is really good against backs them up by a turn and that's really nice also a body on the battlefield that survives quote unquote survives sweepers like deafening clear Clarion, Realm Cloak Giant, Kaya's Wrath. So really important to have this against the various and sundry control decks in the format. But this also forces, sort of forces, the cat decks to break, you know, uh, food tokens with Trail of Crumbs and, you know, uh, activate Trail of Crumbs on their turn and do the cat witch oven loop on their turn because it costs so much to do on your turns. So again, this is really, really good in a couple of specific decks and it even makes it to where they have to... Um, you know, pay a mana to pop Fabled Passage on your turn. There's just all kinds of stuff Tide Taker does right now, and it's one of the main reasons I wanted to put this deck together, because Tide Taker looks, like, very well positioned in this format. But there's a couple of other two drops, you know, Glass Casket for a little early game removal. It's actually surprising how much this takes out. You know, this is Gruel Spellbreakers and Rotting Regisars and everything down. Um, Love Struck Beast. There's all kinds of good targets for glo a Glass Casket right now. And there's also Dawn of Hope, which I don't always want to play on turn two, but it is the deck's most reliable, and really White's most reliable card advantage engine and all of standard right now we got plenty of ways to gain life but usually we're just going to gain life with dawn of hope tokens that we've made you know there's a great mana sink in the late game if we start drawing dead or if we just need something to do dawn of hope is much better than like castle arden veil because the creatures that it makes are lifelink and arden veil effectively costs five mana because you have to tap it too so dawn of hope just kind of invalidates castle arden veil but it's not going to keep me from playing castle arden veil we need dawn of hope mostly as the card advantage engine and this will actually draw us like three four cards in a lot of games and really help us you know get past the finish line in terms of card advantage there's also a main deck disenchant in here to deal with like you know trail of crumbs and witches ovens and fires of invention there's all kinds of reasons to have disenchant plus this will also come in handy if someone prison realm something or conclave tribunal something there's all kinds of reasons to have disenchant in your deck but there's also gideon black play which i'd really like to play at least one if not two whole more copies of but i just don't have any more mythic wild cards <laughs> at the moment i've only got two gideon black blades so now you know that about me but i actually think that it might be worth playing more of these it's a really good card that again is able to get past sweepers and stuff like that so if your fire's opponent is like playing time wipes and whatnot, then Gideon Blackblade could actually be really, really good. But there's also Prison Realm, Conclave Tribunal, a little bit more of this enchantment base removal. And all of these enchantments can be gotten back if they happen to kill your Cavalier of Dawn. So Cavalier of Dawn has something to do in this deck. But I've split up the five drops here between Cavalier of Dawn and Angel of Grace. It's, you know, both two ofs. I don't think Cavalier is good enough to play a four of, and I certainly don't think Angel of Grace is good enough to play a four of. But Angel of Grace has won a couple of games. That's just a big fat flying lady. That's all we need her to be a lot of the time. I've actually only used 
you know, her first ability to keep myself from dying one time in the week that I've been playing this deck. But that was a pretty sweet play. <laughs> There's also a five drop in Realm Cloak Giant because it's effectively a five drop. There are some creatures lower on the curve than Realm Cloak Giant, obviously, but for the most part, it's all stuff like, you know, Cavalier of Dawn that can have a little benefit when it dies or Tide Taker, which creates a token when it dies. So for the most part, you're not too worried about pulling the trigger on the sweeper if you need a sweeper. But of course, later in the game, you just cast a 7-7 Vigilance, and that's a pretty straight deal too. But there's Ugin the Ineffable, which is just an all-purpose Planeswalker that's also a really good piece of, you know, just removal that's more or less unconditional. I mean, you can't kill like Witch's Ovens with it, but for the most part, you can destroy just about anything with this card. So it's really good against the fires decks and other decks that play like off kilter permanent types and it also destroys planeswalkers and prison realm can't be the only thing and conclave tribunal can't be the only thing that gets rid of those but between ugin and conclave tribunal and prison realm we actually have cards that can take out a, a wide variety of different permanent types and ugin the ineffable by the way is also a uh, token generator and i really like a creature factory like that in a deck like this because we you know dawn of hope and ugin the ineffable will ultimately end up putting out you know two or three creatures a turn and that's really hard for a lot of people to deal with in the late game so we do have some gas in the late game we've got some decent early game plays and a lot of really good removal all in all to kind of tie the deck together so as, as far as our card advantage engine it's just dawn of hope and i think that's what hurts the deck the most but honestly you look at this assortment of cards and none of them are necessarily bad cards on their own so let's take it on to mount garina and see how it does today because it's really a finicky deck it doesn't do great against everything but it does do really well against some decks so i'm not going to sit here and promise you the world and that it's like oh this definitely proves that white is the is the best color it turns out no no none of that but <laughs> we'll definitely see how she does in some games let me get a sip real quick delicious Today's drink is just a citrus drop. That's all. You know, usually I have a, like a fancy drink or something like that, but not not for this one. I'm just, I'm just going with the old standby. It's the, it's the end of the month and I'm poor, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty I'm poor just about every day after after I pay my rent and bills and stuff. But this uh looks like not a great hand, but also not a terrible hand. We can work up to Gideon Blackblade, Dawn of Hope turn two, Giant Killer. Opponent goes first, so we'll have a chance to see whether or not we should play this Giant Killer turn one. Things are looking okay here. Let's see what B Cell 94 has got. Ginger Brute. Okay, so maybe we do play Giant Killer. Although they played Island here, so Giant was actually saving Giant Killer is the right play. Because this is the uh, the deck that makes Ginger Brute really big. That's that's the whole thing this deck is doing. We drew Dawn of Hope this turn, which is terrible. But if we can just get to, you know, three mana, we can kill this Ginger Brute no matter how big it gets. And it will start getting relatively big here with, like, all the glares. Yep, they tap for a mana. Ginger Brute. Okay, so that's not great. But that's not bad either. Emery, Lurker of the Lock. What you gonna put, what you gonna put in there? A bunch of lands and a Steel Overseer, which is exactly what they were looking for. So let's take two here, go down to 17. We get an Ugin. Let's just play our second land in Dawn of Hope. Still developing our board. Our opponent's got a really good one, so maybe we'll either just get to Giant Killer or something here. So I'm not really sure how big these are going to get. Yeah, they're going to play Steel Overseer this turn. I'd really like to get to Realm Cloak Giant now. So this deck does develop its board really fast. I'd be, I mean, Realm Cloak Giant would be really sweet, but we have to actually get to it. There's our third mana. Let's just probably Gideon Blackblade plus one. Let's see. They tap that. One, two, three, four, five. So they'll just kill the Gideon, but they won't, they won't hit us. <laughs> That's kind of nice. But um, I think I'm actually just going to play Dawn of Hope number two here. No. No, let's just next. There's no reason to play Dawn of Hope when I could just hold up Giant Killer. Definitely the right play. I'm not sure that not playing Gideon wasn't the right play there, but very soon Ginger Brutes are going to start getting big, especially if they do get an All the Glitters. That is, It is this deck. It is definitely said deck, so... See what Beazle's doing. They're going to untap Steel Overseer with a Corridor Monitor. And we are going to take some damage, my dudes. Boop, boop, boop. We're down to eight. That's what this deck does best. Turn four. We get an Angel of Grace. 
Now we're in a spot of trouble. We're at eight, seven, six, five, four, because they'll tap the steel overseer. Or actually, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They could just attack. So you know, there's that too. Could just play giant killer and Gideon Blackblade here, but it's not going to matter. I do need to be able to block a creature next turn, so let's just do that. Even though I don't think it's going to be three, six, seven, eight. Yeah, and then Gideon. It's like, if I'd have made a creature with Dawn of Hope and blocked, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they're good gaming us. And they should. So I guess let's just give this thing a something until end of turn. Life link it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then say go. I think this might actually be the, um, the first game I've ever lost to this deck. The Steel Overseer, Ginger Brood, All the Glitters deck. I've never seen Emery in it, although it should be. I just think that the game doesn't usually get to that point, right? So let's just good game them, as they have already good game to us. And see what they have this turn. That can be fun. I'm going to quarter monitor. There you go, buddy. See, maybe I should have saved the giant killer. It still wouldn't have mattered. I'm going to tap it again. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So yeah, I'd still take like 12, even if I giant killer to ginger brood away. And we couldn't get to Realm Cloak Giant this game. It was just a perfect uh, game for them. That really was like the exact way that the game needs to go for this, this deck across the table from us. But I've seen this deck around more and more lately. I don't know if like a YouTuber covered it or something. But again, I think that might actually be the first loss that we've had to that deck. <laughs> so, you know, it would have been better to go first, but I don't think it would have helped us too much in that game what would have been really nice is a prison realm or something for the the uh, overseer but even then again they just got the absolute like most fantastic start they could ever hope for so let's hope game two is a little bit better here <laughs> right <laughs> against pa trick let's hope we don't somehow lose our platinum ranking i don't even know if that can happen <laughs> i don't think so all right, so we go first on this one. We got a little bit of removal. We got a Charming Prince, too, to scry. And a couple of Cavalier of Dawn to work towards, but I really would like another early game play here. But that said, we should be fine. As soon as our opponent does turn one here, it might influence what we do. Well, I'm pretty sure Charming Prince is coming down one way or the other here. All right, PA Trick. Nice sleeves. I don't play with sleeves, and it makes everyone mad. Everyone's <laughs> your comments all the time. Like, Dev, sleeve up your deck. Like, no, I kind of want to feel... Like I'm playing um, old school magic. I, I just <laughs> don't know why. Should I glass casket this Gilded Goose? I think that's actually the right play. Have that, you silly goose. You filthy animal. Keep the change. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I want to feel like I'm playing in like 1993. So I don't, <laughs> I don't play with sleeves. <laughs> that's not that's before I even played. I started in 95. Which was... Was an age ago. Okay, here's a witch's oven. So it is, in fact, the Jun Sacrifice deck. It appears to be, at least. So let's charm and prince. Looks like the boyfriend from um, the Devil Wears Prada. And let's scry two here. See what we got coming up. One, two, three, four, five. We actually do need the sixth planes to play the Ugin, but I'm gonna do that. I do think that maybe I want the Ugin, but like we can't play anything next turn, which kind of sucks. <laughs> But we can get something on turn five. We can get this Cavalier on turn five. I actually think it's okay. I actually do think that I want this Ugin. And we have like a couple of turns to draw uh, lands. So I think it might be okay here. Note that I, I did throw a land back there, but I'd really rather draw like a land and an action card. And I want to kind of draw the action card first, I think. So <laughs> I think it's worth throwing one land back. Statistically, we're very likely to get another one, but I guess we'll see. Turn three here for the opponent. They've got all of the colored mana sources that they might need. Oh, Witch's Oven, and they put a cat out. So cool, cool. We knew we were going to draw the Ugin, and we know that we can't do much of anything this turn. So it's just no attacks. Let them do their little their little trick with the kitty. You got to do it. You got to do it. Have you all come across anybody? Um, I've, I have like two or three times now, but it actually hasn't happened as much as I thought that it would. But if y'all come across anybody that'll use, uh, they'll play cat combo. And what they'll do is they'll rope uh, every time they go to activate Witch's Oven. Like they'll just wait until they rope. 
and then they'll do, you know, sacrifice cauldron familiar, get it back with the food token. And the next turn they wait till they rope again. And like, they don't just do it when they're in like, Hey, we got another land. They don't just do it when they're in like a, a bad situation necessarily. They'll just do it all the time. Like every single turn they'll rope. And like, again, I've only come across it a few times and I'm glad, but I just want to know if more people have seen that or like the intentional roping with cat combo every single turn. Cause geez, <laughs> and you can't like teach them the wrong lesson. You know what I mean? Like you can't um, concede that game because then they'll continue doing it. <laughs> I got a lot to think about here. We're going to bust up this witch's oven. So you should tap it. Okay. I guess we'll, they'll just wait until we target it. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do it. You do it guy. I'm going to start developing a plan because <laughs> like they still have um, a cat and two food tokens. So let's no attacks. Something else I don't like about Charming Prince. Um, this has come up a bunch of times. You know, if you Cavalier of Dawn something, it doesn't matter how awesome it, it, it is that you got that thing off the battlefield. Uh, Charming Prince still can't attack into a golem. So that's not great. Let's see what they do to our Cavalier here. They're going to Assassin's Trophy. Which I suppose I'm fine with. We have another Cavalier. And I can block with Charming Prince here. I'm not too worried about it. Or I can just go to 14, which is probably the better call. Bop. All right, so they have two cards in their hand. They have a cat in the graveyard. Three mana. None of it's black. Yeah, they've only got one black source, which is probably, like, really hampering them. All right, so we got a Realm Cloak Giant. That's kind of neat. Bop. Let's see if we Ugin this turn. We can't kill the Golem. That's another thing that kind of sucks about Ugin. <laughs> Let's throw that out there. We actually could just play Realm Cloak Giant this turn, but it would be best to just, you know, play the story, the adventure half of it, and then next turn probably throw it down with Vigilance. If we Ugin, we'd just make a token this turn. And we could double block with it and Charming Prince to kill the Golem. That might be the, the best call. Let's do that. See if they get the other black source for a murderous rider. I think that's just about all they can do. Are we going to be able to play it? Oh my God. Are we going to do it? Oh, have we, have we hit one of those opponents I was talking about? Actually <laughs> just ropes every decision out of desperation. Let's make a two, two. Come on with it. Yep. Ah, it's a land. Under the 2-2. Two -two. It's really hoping for a little bit of action. They are eyeing this Ugin hard. What you got, cuz? What you, what you got over there? Maybe they do have a murderous rider, and they're like, come on, Black Source. Because I think, I think that's all that I'm worried about right now. I guess Mayhem Devil wouldn't be ideal, but they don't have an oven, so whatever. Anissa... Which is fine. Should be at least. Let's see. So, block a land, block a land, block a golem. We'll still get a hit in on Ugin. Because, like, we, well, no, we don't have to be able to kill this Nissa next turn. We can always just Cavalier of Dawn. That might be the better call. So let's make that decision right here and now. Do we want to be able to Ugin away this Nissa, Block and lose both of our guys. They don't lose anything. Or do we just Cavalier of, of Dawn next turn? That way we can double block something. Ugin can take a little bit of damage, keep making tokens. And we can get something off the battlefield. Preferably, probably this forest. I think that's what I'll do. I think I'll double block the forest. Ugin can go down to two. Hopefully that's what happens here. They're tapped out, so I think we're just waiting on whether or not they want to bring a cat back. Yeah, here we go. So Ugin down to dose. They're looking at the cards in their hand like they can play them. Hmm. Oh, like are you gonna just cat this turn? Like on your own turn? It'd be a thing to do. 
I wonder when they're going to draw their next Witches Oven. All right, so we get it. There's another land. Jeez. We got to land up under the uh, Ugin token, and we got to land from our draw step. That's not ideal. All right, so let's just Cavalier. Come on. Come on with it. Pop that Nissa in the chops. Come on. Come on. You can, you can quit shaking the world. Get in the yard. Make a 2-2 two -two with Oogies. And we got a giant killer under that one. Play our land for the turn. Say go. I'm not attacking into that board state. Hopefully, we can just protect this Ugin. If we can pull off having this Ugin and play for another couple of turns, I think we can probably win the game. What I'd like to do is maybe get like a real attack step in with these creatures. Nothing for Cavalier to bring back in our graveyard right now. I'm going to Fabled Passage. And they did get their second black source. And they, they, it looks like they do maybe have a murderous rider here, don't you? Don't you? Reveal yourself to me. Looks like they want to take out this Cavalier of Dawn. But if they do take out Cavalier of Dawn, that's fine. Because we can still double block this turn and Realm Cloak Giant next turn. Which will be awesome. All right, they did have Murderous Rider. They decided not to kill the Yugen. They're just going to swing in on the Yugen. What I'd really like is to just be able to, to... I'd really like if they had the mana to also cast Murderous Rider this turn. That would be, that would be fantastic. So let's just double block here. We are going to get a Giant Killer. It's definitely something to keep in mind. Like, this is like drawing two cards, which is actually really sweet right now. This guarantees our next our, our land for next turn, so that's nine mana next turn. We can activate Ardenvale and still have four mana, which is pretty sweet, but we'll probably Realm Cloak Giant next turn. Interesting, they brought a cat back. Bop. Bop, give me my cards. Get my cards to me. We got another land. Jeez. Can we draw some action here? Can we? Can we please? Mom. Let's Realm Cloak Giant. Yeah. Let's destroy all creatures that ain't giants. Whoosh. And then make a thing. Got a glass casket up under our 2-2 guy. And really like if I could still activate Ardenville, but you know, we talked about that. I don't think I'll have to hold this giant killer. I really don't. It's like Corvold? It's like if they're playing Jun, they're playing Corvold, right? So kind of amazing they haven't drawn it yet there are only you know 14 cards into the library so there's that how deep are we 42 so we're definitely winning the card advantage raise thanks to this Ugin mostly well I'm gonna hold it I don't have any reason not to you know I think the only argument for playing it right now is that we'll be able to tap down the murderous rider with it on time but I'm not actually even that worried about that so like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll cast Realm Cloak Giant, still have three mana up, so we'll still be able to Giant Killer. All right, they have one card in their hand, and they say go. Okay, so we have a Prison Realm. And that's three, yeah, cool. So that should be enough. Eight, nine, ten. Seven mana to cast this, Prison Realm. Okay. Hmm. Sweet. Maybe we actually maybe turn the game around here, so let's Prison Realm. The Moiterous Rider, if they'll ever let us. Come on, P.A. Trick. You just a trick. Gideon Blackblade on top. I will take it. 
I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Let's Ugin get a Goy and play Realm Cloak Giant. And I suppose we'll swing. I suppose we'll do that. And then maybe I'll just um, play Giant Killer next turn, like, regardless. Because if they ever do get a Corville, we can just start tapping it. We don't care. Like, we're on the offensive now. We just want to be able to tap down whatever they play so we can get through for damage. Plus, we do have Ugin here, too. Um, and he's on five, which is really, really sweet. Because now we can blow something away. We might even get to the point where we can kill two things and keep the Ugin alive. But we'll see if uh, PA Trick scoops before we get to that point. And yeah, we'll be we'll swing dis indiscriminately with this 2-2 because it's got the Gideon under it. I wanted to do that. <laughs> Trust me, I didn't sequence that in properly. I want to have a 2-2 they don't want to kill. So, And now, if we, you know, Realm Cloak Giant again or something, then we just get, like, the best payoff ever. So they casualties. There goes Realm Cloak Giant and Ugin. That sucks. They also get a land, but, like, eh, it was hard and Veil. That kind of sucks. <clears throat> Got rid of an enchantment. So that was actually a great... We drew another land. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Ch jerks. All right, so I'll just play Giant Killer. That was like the best casualties ever. It's like the more I looked at it, the more I was like, oh, they got that too. Oh, they got that too. Jeez. <laughs> God. Calm down over there, PA trick. So uh, you're going you to let us uh, resolve this Giant Killer? <laughs> I really don't, I do not understand why you would rope right now. I don't, I don't get it. All right. Here she comes. It's on the tabla. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool. Let's swing with this 2 2. The one that's got the Gideon under it. In case you're listening and not watching. As a lot of people tend to do. Thanks. If you do that, I really appreciate your listen. But we'll see if they kill it with the Murderous Rider here and give us a Gideon. I, I really don't think they want to. There we go. And of course, we can always just double block next turn. Hopefully, if all works out, we can double block next turn. Um, and they can't kill both things with a Murderous Rider. All right, here comes Trail of Crumbs. Things are going to start getting nasty. See if they can turn it around on us. They really don't have a whole lot of lands over there. We've gotten all of our lands, right? Like, we've 11 in total because they killed a Castle Ardenvale. And they're just now on their 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th. So, another trail of crumbs. Woof. <laughs> That's not good. It's, like, really ungood. It's all right. I got another land. So, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, that was the Fable Passage, yeah popping off they will pop a food get back a kitty cat and get a paradise druid off of the trail of crumbs and they'll also get a gilded, is that a gilded goose yeah gilded goose off of the other trail of crumbs so let's just see if we don't get buried in a mountain of card advantage here they have 39 cards left we have 39 so they've caught up to us in quad advantage and I don't like that. Don't like that at all. Now we get to go. We get a Dawn of Hope. That's a good card. For the moment. Okay, so 8, 7, 6 to tap something with Giant Killer. Sweet. So we can make a token with Dawn of Hope block and still uh, draw a card. So. Like that. Like that quite a bit. Let's say we attack with these two things. Block, they can bring a cat back. Maybe they'll block with the other cat. They get in Paradise Druid, Gilded Goose next turn. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to attack here. We've always got Dawn of Hope to make a creature for us. Just got to get them to kill this Gideon. <laughs> Again, we could always find another Realm Cloak Giant. And that would actually be really sweet. We draw a Gideon in a, a giant's casket or a, a, a glass casket, and we'd still have Dawn of Hope to like keep churning out creatures. So that's what I'm kind of hoping to draw right now. Nissa, which is uh, if you're keeping score, bad. That's very bad news that they just got another Nissa. 
Come on with it then. It's not a hard decision. <laughs> Love you though. All right, four, so six mana open. Now you attack is what you do. <laughs> well, I guess you could cast, you know, stuff in your hand. Yeah, but you got to do it. I shouldn't, I really shouldn't talk. Like, trust me, I'm not tilted. It's just like I play arena for like six hours a day, at least on most days. And like, I just get so tired of people not just playing. Just play the game. <laughs> like, if you have a legitimate decision to make, then make the decision. But otherwise, like, ah, <laughs> didn't have anything down with Giant Killer there. I don't remember actually getting the option to pass, but maybe I did. So let's make a thing. And then block with it. Block the forest. Murder Strider's still going to get through here. We'll go up to 10 from the lifelink. We'll draw our card. Yeah. Yeah, you auto pay for that. We got a Tithe Taker. Gets us closer to a Realm Cloak Giant. <laughs> At least there's that. Definitely not done for the turn here. They can play Gilded Goose. Um, like a Cauldron Familiar. And just draw two, basically. They wanted to, they could still Gilded Goose. Get a Beanstalk Giant off the first. Trail of Crumbs. And a Swamp off the second. Okay. wonder how many casualties they're playing. It's probably like three. <laughs> three or four like a lot of these do. These casualties would suck right now. They got Beanstalk and the man to play at one, two. Well, yeah, I don't even know why I'm counting. They have a Nissa in play. So Beanstalk, we're going to use it. Here comes the goose. Hell of a turn. Got to hand it to him. Rats off to you. All right. All right, buddy. I think you've had your fun. <laughs> I guess, uh, EOT, what do we tap down here? A goose? <laughs> just for, just for the halibut, as the fishermen say. Hey, another tithe taker. That's a card that exists. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We can't tap anything with the giant killer. If we play both tithe takers and we want to make a token and gain life. It's a tall order. But I will double tithe taker. I will do it, but we have to actually start doing something about this Nissa. We have to draw a Prison Realm, a Conclave Tribunal, an Ugin, a Cavalier of Dawn. Like, there's a bunch of answers we could be drawing, but we're not drawing any of them right now, which really sucks. So, let's see. Six, so we can still make a guy draw a card. Bop, bop, bop. We'll attack in to the Nissa with these two guys, these two uh, Ugin tokens. They will get double blocked by, or not double blocked, but they will both get blocked by cats. Sure, one will come back. We're just not sure when. In time to get them card advantage is the answer to that. See, at this point, like I could still realm cloaked, and it would still be a great call. Actually, Tithe Taker would just make two tokens. That's pretty sweet. We get a Gideon. Of course, we still really wouldn't have any action against the Nissa. Like, at this point, I just need to draw an answer to the Nissa in the next, like, two turns. Or we're in dire straits. There's a core vault. They can play her. Him. It. <laughs> and they will, I'm sure. The actual best card in their deck. So they'll play core vault and just start running away with card advantage. It's ridiculous. Of course, they already are with the two Trail of Crumbs. Like, considering I haven't drawn a Realm Cloak Giant or an answer to this Nissa in the last two turns, then, like, it's... I probably should concede. And if I don't next turn, I think I will. Even though we're actually pretty set up, I just there's no way with this board state to beat a Nissa. And a Corvald's going to come down and make it worse. They also have 
a murderous rider in their hand, which hurts. This actually hurts so bad. All right, Cauldron Familiar comes back. Finally. Or no, that's actually, I think they just played it out of their hand. Um, not actually sure if that was after a bunch of triggers or not. <laughs> All right, so let's not tap anything. So swing with everything, or all the big stuff at least. Oh, they're even coming in with Paradise Druid. Wow. Even P. Diddy. Unless they're not sure that they're going to do that. They're having a hell of a time figuring out what creatures they want to attack with here. Okay. Yeah, everything's coming in. Eventually. Thank you. <laughs> God. <sighs> All right. Dawn of Hope is activated. We finally got the token. It's not my computer. It's real. It's not. <laughs> like <they're... laughs> <clears throat> Come on. Come on. They are roped. So they were, and the thing is, we're going to lose the game too. Like they just keep intentionally roping and we're still going to lose. So block. Block. Double block the uh, murderous rider. Tide take a block of land. Tell you what, yeah, yeah, I'll do those blocks. I'll do those blocks. And then, at some point, in the next half hour, we can draw a card off of uh, Dawn of Hope. <laughs> we'll see when that happens. They are, they are again roped. I wonder if they're saying to themselves, like, why won't they just concede? Like, do I really have to rope? Like, come on, I've got you, man. It's like, I don't know. I've, I've, I got one more turn to draw an impactful card here. I wonder if they're going to get smart and, like, murderous rider this soldier so he can't draw a card. That would be a thing to do. Oh, they did it. Okay, nice. Called it. <laughs> totally called it. It actually is a very good play right now. So I can't blame them for making it. Pass. So we'll go down to four. And at this point, we basically like have to draw, uh, you know, something, some answer to Nyssa on this turn. And then, um, well, we have to draw Realm Cloak Giant and then an answer to Nyssa is basically what must happen. Even if we draw Realm Cloak Giant, they still have Beanstalk, so... We're in a, a heaping mound of trouble. We have been for like two turns here. But we draw land as we've been doing all game. Good lord, Arena. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let's just tell them good game. Even though like if we'd have drawn gas just once instead of a land, the like... How many times did we draw land that turn, y'all? Like... Or that game? Ex excuse me. It's just... Wow. I'm like... I'm not, Again, I'm not tilted. Like it's a game. But at some point you got to stop drawing lands. And that's how many videos in a row where just like we it, arena refuses to give us anything but lands. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> but all right, let's try another one here and see what see what happens. I've got a fair amount of faith that we can beat Fanks 272 with an underscore in the middle. So we go first here. And I'm not a huge fan of the hand, but at least we're locked down on removal. At least we are. We got a Castle Ardenvale to kind of work towards here. It could work. So far, we're totally proving Vince. Uh, Pleasant Kenobi. 100% <laughs> right. We've lost two in a row. Uh, one very fast and another a very slow death that I'm sure was agonizing to watch. <laughs> At one point, it looked like we could have had that game under control, but Casualties of War is what won that game for our opponent. Um, that go round, so... Let's see what happens here as our opponent has mold to five cards. That's such a low amount of cards. Um, that leads me to believe. Well, I guess we'll see. Well, wait, there's no reason to rush in and play Giant Killer on turn one. We don't necessarily need to do that. 
All right, so Swamp into Night of the Ebon Legion. It led me to believe they were playing aggro, and I was apparently right about that. Should have maybe played the Giant Killer, but now if they ever deign to activate Knight, we can kill it with the Giant Killer, so should be okay. We have Prison Realm Conclave Tribunal, and we will get to them. Not too worried about it. Okay, Red Black, so it's probably the Invercleave deck. Swing in, get you a one. Oh, here comes Black Lance. They're going to get a little lifelink. A little lifelink on. I feel like that's the best way to use Black Lance Paragon. Say next, in the turn. Now let's see if we can get them to waste three mana on Knight of the Ebon Legion's ability here. That'd be real nice. Okay, they don't. They're just going to start putting counters on it. Oathsworn Knight. Our turn. All right. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight next turn. God, this deck is so fast. <laughs> this deck is ridiculous. And that's if we kill the Oathsworn Knight. Hmm. Four, five, six, seven next turn. Go down to eight. That's actually not the worst life total. I will Prison Realm, Knight of the Ebon Legion. Which isn't the best trade in terms of mana value ever. There's a Dawn of Hope on top. Do I want it? Do we want that? Really wish I didn't have the Disenchant in my hand. Yeah, uh, that's a hard think, but I think I do want it. Then I want to play Giant Killer. We can Conclave Tribunal the Osworn Knight. Thinking um, I want to hold off this uh, Black Lance Paragon from attacking this turn. I could have used the Giant Killer to kill Osworn Knight. I'm completely aware of that. but Oh, we didn't hold it off from attacking. I wonder what that means. I wonder what that could possibly mean. Huh. Well, let's just block. Go down to 11. I wonder if we're going to get a, like a Rotting Regisar here or something. It's a Spawn of Mayhem, which isn't great, of course. <laughs> Blast Zone. Coming down. Well, let's Tribunal the Spawn. They only have one card in their hand, but in their hand, but they do get to put us at seven this turn. Of course, next turn we can play Dawn of Hope and make a, a token with it. Start blocking. Embercleave. Oh no, we're at one, <laughs> and we have to find a way to kill this Embercleave. I guess we can disenchant it, but we won't be able to make a token with Dawn of Hope. So. We'll die if we don't draw another removal spell of some kind this turn. Pass it up. Our turn, come on. It's Tithe Taker, which I guess at least blocks for us, right? It at least does that. So, Tithe Taker. Go ahead and play Dawn of Hope. And in the turn. To make sure they can't do any funny business like, you know, Fervent Champion, you know, something like that. Pass. I try to get in here. Let's disenchant the Embercleave. They are paying mana to draw a card. Okay. See what they can do with their one card this turn. Let's choose our blocker and Blork. Blorking is important. Keep that in mind, kids. And we get a land. <laughs> You're very good at getting lands. They have highlighted our Dawn of Hope. They're, they're looking real hard at it right now. But we're... Uh kind of devoted to using Dawn of Hope at this point. Like, I can't put any counters on Blast Zone. Although, I think I'd like to, to be honest. It's like, I could put a couple of counters on Blast Zone right now. I could. I could just block with this. But, oh, do you have another cleave? I wonder if they have another cleave. 
One has to wonder. Let's make it so good. I think they do have some sort of instant speed thing. Or it's a maybe castle lock plan. Oh, never mind. You're not tapping for red. You're not doing it. What are you doing over there, you sneaky goose? <laughs> What's your plan? Tap you some mana. Okay. Tapping mana's fun. Can't play Embercleave now. Let's block. Let's draw our card. Come on. Let us. Let us and catch up in Romaine. Do it. <laughs> First strike or something? Oh, yeah, you prevent the damage. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. You prevent the damage. Nice. Okay. So, woof. Let's put one counter on the blast zone. Bring it up to hold two. Rum Club Giant. Okay. So, let's RCG this turn. Uh, but then if they get a haste guy, we're dead. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Like, we definitely survive. Let's see. We could just Dawn of Hope and block both of these things, right? And then we survive. Or we could Realm Cloak Giant and not survive. <laughs> it's possible that we don't survive. They get, like, a Fervent Champion. But, uh, oof. Eesh, yikes. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, uh, please don't die. Please don't fervent champion this turn. Please don't fervent champion. <laughs> oh, you're gonna do it, aren't you? Aren't you? Got another castle lock the way, and they're gonna pay mana to draw some some curds here. All right, resolve. Come on, heart of the cards, heart of the cards. I don't even feel comfortable playing realm code giant next turn. I I, I don't. But I'm gonna. Five, six, seven. So you make a token with Dawn of Hope, gain life once, and we have one mana left. There's a Knight of the Ebon Legion. And. Nothing. Alright, so. Another Rome Club Giant. Funny, funny stuff. Alright. Is it better to just make a token with Dawn of Hope here than to play either one of these? Is a 1-1 one, one lifelinker for four that draws a card for an additional two actually like better than e either of these plays right now? Hmm. Y'all let me know in the comments section what you'd do here. But I'm going to wait in Dawn of Hope. Now, if they get a haste creature here, that could be bad. They're going to run their life total out for us. These castles. But eventually, they're going to draw a game-winning card with it. Hell, all they need is like a... a, a, a why can't I remember its name? Storm, Cra Storm something? Stormfist Crusader. That's what it is. Play with the card a million times. <laughs> I'm really bad at card names, though. All right, Pass. And if they can, like, Murderous Rider this Dawn of Hope token before we can block with it, that's our game. Hmm. All right. Looks like they can't. Embercleave. Okay. I was wondering if that's what it was. So let's good game them and let them just let them kill us. <laughs> that's fine. I was going to, like, concede, but I've said this before. I like people to, to have their wins, you know? Let's do that. We're at zero. <laughs> and let's get in one more. We are, what is that, zero and three with this deck now? <laughs> so we are quickly climbing down the platinum ladder. <laughs> That's always fun. This deck has won a bunch of games in the past. It's just like really awful tonight. Really not drawing what we need to draw um, an awful lot of the time. 
So it turns out that the right play there was to uh, Realm Cloak Giant, by the way. Okay, so this doesn't look fantastic, but we do have Gideon, so that's nice. And a five-minute play and a six-minute play, but will we even make it there? So this is... I don't know how capable it is, honestly. But we're going to try it against Philo Veritas 79 here. Basically, the deciding factor, the determining factor, was uh, the fact that we go first here. Fervent champion, it's that kind of party. So, like, the worst deck to keep his hand against. <laughs> you could possibly imagine. <laughs> That's okay. It's not. Uh, just for the record, it's not okay, but... You know, you have to act like it is. So, hey, that's also not great, but <laughs> whatever, right? Really teaching me my lesson here. A lesson that I've learned countless times over the years. You gonna um, light up the stage? No, you're gonna skewer me. Okay. You don't always see skewer in these decks, but it does put a counter on their knight. Planes. Yeah, I'm thinking about playing Donna Hub. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. So like next turn I'm conclaving something almost certainly, right? We might actually get a chance to um to use Angel of Grace in this game. But if we uh if we play Dawn of Hope, it's possible we don't get a chance to use it. So let's see if we can at least uh soak up some life here with this uh Gideon. Cause even if it just dies to attacks, I'm kinda of fine with it just buying us a turn, you know? Let's see if they registrar this turn. That would be the perfect nightmare. Dreadhorde Butcher isn't much better, to be honest with you. It's really not. Oh, and another Fervent Champion. God, every deck that we play against tonight is getting their perfect hand against us. Everyone's coming in to get to Gideon. Yeah, y'all. Y'all double up. Bop, 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 bop. Ba 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 da 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 do. We get a land. I got a rock. So let's conclave tribunal. Something. <laughs> Excuse me. So knight or dread horde butcher. Knight or dread horde butcher. Ah, uh, knight of the Evan Legion. It hurts so bad. <laughs> it really does. Cause God, that dread horde's gonna get big. Dread horde butcher. <laughs> that's me. That's me throwing up all over my office. Bop bop, bop bop. We're at eight. So we like we have to angel of grace next turn. <laughs> we absolutely must. But like, there's no way we're beating the two dread horde butchers, right? So, so I'm, oh my God, they're gonna scare us. Hmm. <laughs> Yikes. All right, so uh, let's Angel of Grace. We actually get to use Angel of Grace for, like, its intended purpose, which is really sweet. It's very cool. And we get to block a Dreadhorde Butcher, too, and not really take damage from it, so that's pretty nice. Bone Crusher. Yeah, sure. I'll go to three. You're just trying to play out your hand. Well, you're not even going to good game me, man. You're not even going to do it. Philo Veritas, you're not going to do it. Resolve. Resolve. Angel of Grace. <laughs> at, least, at least we got that good moment here. Let's block the butch. The butcher. And guess what? We go to one. Pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah, kill Angel of Grace, whatever. That's fine. We get a tithe taker. It don't do nothing. <laughs> Even an Ugin would have been not acceptable, but okay. So I'm in a good game of now. And then we'll get out of here. What do we go? 0-17 oh, <laughs> with the mono white midrange. So, hey, you know, if the point wasn't proven before, I would say the point is definitely proven now. White is terrible. <laughs> so, you know, and I actually don't think that any of those games would have been that much better. 
um, with better play. So let me know uh, what y'all want to see next out of all of these um, or anything that, that I haven't shown off that you don't see here that you want to see, you know, the mono white glitter deck uh, with all the glitters and a bunch of enchantments. Abzan Adventures, which is literally like all one drop adventure stuff. <laughs> it's basically all it is, um, but it's really good. Cynic Clones is maybe one of the best decks that I have in my entire collection right now. Turbo, Turbo Cat, which is not necessarily Turbo because the colors are hard to get, but you know, st still got like Corpse Knight and Cruel Celebrant and Mayhem Devil and Judith. You know, <laughs> it's just trying to do like eight damage off of one, you know, cat going to the graveyard trigger. So, you know, you still got 22 ovens down here. It's a really bad deck, but I'll play it on camera. Just let me know. <laughs> As far as mono white mid range goes, I still think that this deck has a lot of really powerful cards in it. We just, I mean, when, when did we draw them, right? Like, maybe we should go up to four Realm Cloak Giants. We saw a few situations in those games where even though we had creatures on the battlefield, we still would not have minded drawing a Realm Cloak Giant. It would have been very beneficial. Also, I'm thinking maybe, even though Angel of Grace did some work there at the end, maybe cutting Angel of Grace, just going up a Cavalier of Dawn, maybe putting something else in the three or four drop slot because we're very, very low on four drops. I'm also thinking of maybe putting in um, Divine Visitation here as just a one of. It's all I've got, but I think a one of is all we need. You know, we got Ugin the Ineffable, Dawn of Hope, um, as well as Tithe Taker when it dies, um, and something else, Castle Ardenvale, like all of that puts tokens into play. So maybe Divine Visitation has a home in this deck, but there's already so many five drops in the stupid thing. We could come up on Gideon Blackblade, which is probably what I'd do if I cut any of these five and six drops. But, you know, we saw Ugin do a lot of work. If you can actually protect until you get to Ugin and then protect your Ugin, then Ugin can help you win games. And again, if our opponent hadn't gotten casualties in the game, in that game, then Ugin would have won that game for us. So, again, I think there's something to the deck. I think it's got really good removal, glass casket, prison realm, conclave tribunal. You just maybe just have to find the right numbers. And even outside of that, we've got removal. Cavalier of Dawn, Ugin, Realm Cloak Giant. You know, there's a ton. And Giant Killer. There's a ton of removal, but most of it works, aside from Realm Cloak Giant, it mostly all works on like a one-for-one -one basis. And that's often not good enough, especially in a format where you got a lot of adventure creatures, creatures that people are getting, you know, a lot of two for one value off of, whether it's in the form of ETB triggers or adventures or whatever. So these one for one interactions don't seem to work very well. You know, you, you kept seeing situations in those games come up where, oh, if we draw a prison realm, we'll do OK here. But then they play another threat and we're in a situation where where even if we draw a prison realm, we haven't sufficiently neutralized their board state. So again, these one for ones don't really work out so well in this format right now. And again, we need a much better card draw engine than just Dawn of Hope. So white has some glaring problems, but it's all the problems it's always had, you know, so Hopefully the wizards can fix it because we didn't, we proved nothing other than, you know, white's bad. So I guess we did prove something <laughs> in this video, but if you somehow want to give this thing a shot, I'll leave a link to the deck list down there in the description for you. So go hog wild, try things out with it, you know, try some different stuff in different slots and see if maybe you have a little bit more success with the deck than I did in this video. Because again, the win rate's been a little bit lower than 50, 50 so far. It has definitely not been you know, zero for five territory every time I take the deck out for a test drive. So, but again, I definitely think there's things that could be changed with it. So just let me know how you feel about it. Um, what could be changed about the basic makeup of it? And if there's any saving this deck whatsoever, but aside from that, just let me know all the other stuff that you want to see. <coughs> Excuse me. Really needed to cough there so I could clear my throat. I think I was sounding a little Kermity there, but, um, <laughs> but anyway, all you got to do, is just let me know any of these decks that you might want to see down there. You know, I still want to do some gameplay stuff during spoiler season because it's fun for me. But yeah, do all that stuff. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. I would really appreciate it. Hopefully my voice hasn't been um, out for the majority of this video. I know that um, I had people tell me that my voice went out the other day at the end of the video. And I wonder if that's this new mic. I guess we'll find out. But either way, um, just let me know how you felt about the deck. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit up the Patreon to support this content because we're going to need all your favorite MTG, MTG YouTubers are going to need a lot of support. Um, coming up in the new year because a lot of rules are changing here on YouTube and I'm not even sure we're going to make money through AdSense anymore. So please consider pitching in just a dollar a month to the Patreon. It would mean a giant world of difference to me. Just sort of make up the difference because we're about to take a huge pay cut we all are but anyway that's pretty much it um be back for with more theros spoilers like really really soon make sure you sub to the channel hit the bell for the notifications do all the youtube stuff and i'll catch you cats later i'm deaf from the place thanks for watching my wizards spread love and be kind